Today, what we are going to do is we are going to go over advanced alerting and notification options in the Shortel system. A little bit about what we're exactly looking for here and what we're going to be looking at. Um, in the Shortel system, um, you already have your def default methodology of being able to get notified for voicemail, which is your message indicator on your phone, um, updates in your communicator so that you can see those voicemails come in. Um, and the ability to forward those voicemails, mark them as private when you forward them, um, and things like that, which we cover in our um, monthly communicator trainings. What this training is going to get into is a little bit more of the advanced alerting that you can set up in the system, as well as automated setups that you can do in the Shortel system for your voicemail. Um, so what we are going to cover today are things like auto pruning, setting up a class of service so that you can, you can specify how many voicemails a user gets and what their notification options can be, um, as well as event filters so that you can set yourself up to know when certain things occur in your short tail system and can react proactively to them. Um, and finally, escalation profiles, which are a basically a series of steps after you get a voicemail so that you can um, alert certain people, escalate to the appropriate folks, even um, have the system place calls using the voicemail system to a user or a specific group um, so that they are also aware that there is a voicemail waiting. So that's the kind of stuff we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and at the end of each section, I will pause to answer any questions that do come up in the middle. If you do have any questions that occur, um, to you while I'm going over things, go ahead and type them out in the chat here and we will answer those at the end of each, sex, uh, each section, rather, I apologize. So um, without further ado, um, you should see my screen here. Um, you'll see that I'm actually in a user group tab right now um, with a name of sample voicemail. This is gonna be the user group that we're gonna work with for our settings today. Um, if you have um, come to our other admin trainings, um, you'll remember that the user groups are set up from three different classes of service, which are all interchangeable in the system. Um, there's one for your telephony permissions, so what you can do with the phone, your call permissions, so who you can call, and then the one that we are going to be diving in today is the voicemail class of service, which governs um, how big your voicemail box can be, how long messages can be, um, if you want to auto prune, and your forwarding notifications. So what I'm gonna do here, um, to go ahead and get one of these set up is I'm going to go ahead and click on class of service here on the on the uh, left side and it's going to bring you to this page. For the voicemail permissions you'll see that there's already four that, are, that come in the system. You have a large mailbox, a medium mailbox, no mailbox, and small mailbox. These are the predefined settings um, in the short tail system. Um, they can also be modified, um, but just for a little overview, the, the large mailbox is what most people use with their system. You're gonna have settings such as these, um, such as your incoming message length, your maximum messages, and your outgoing message length at the top. Um, how long you want voicemail passwords to um, exist before needing to be changed if you want to provide that in your system, and that is an optional, fe an optional feature. Um, and then also things like message notification, um, such as do you want the voicemail system to be able to call you um, or send notifications out to your email um, if you do have a voicemail in the system and do you want your users to have that ability. Um, this is the default. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna click on new here. And I'm gonna go through the options so you know what you're looking at and then also show you how to apply that to a user group. So when I click on new, um, you'll know it will give you a default name, which is going to be the new voicemail class of service. I'm just going to say training class of service here. And this is just the name that you would you would uh, specify in this so you know what you're looking for when you set up the user group. So there's nothing special about the name. The next three are probably the biggest things that you'll deal with um, in voicemail notifications um, for the actual class of service. The incoming message length in seconds is how long you are allowed to send or allowed to receive a message, how long it can be. Um, the maximum is 3,600 seconds, so an hour. Um, and it does default when you create a new group to 300 seconds or five minutes. So what that means is if I set this at the default and I started leaving um, somebody a long rambling voicemail and they had their class of service set to this, 
Um, after 300 seconds, the system is going to cut in and say, thank you for your call, and actually hang up on me. And what, it, what I have recorded up to that point on the voicemail um, is going to be what they receive. Um, the maximum amount, um, as I noted, is an hour. Um, if you are just trying to make sure that people are not leaving you super long voicemails, you can ch you can um, change this setting to whatever sounds good to you. Um, I've noted a lot of people like to set that at three minutes um, or 180 seconds. But one thing to note on this, and this is important, is if you do any internal recording um, using the short tail communicator or a record button on a desk phone, it actually uses the voicemail system for those recordings. And that incoming message length actually governs how long that recording can be as well. So um, with that in mind, if you do any recording, you do want to make sure that the incoming message length is set to the maximum of 3,600 seconds to make sure that you can have up to an hour of recording at a time. Your incoming maximum messages um, is also basically your maximum voicemail box limit. Um, so this is the amount of messages you can have in your mailbox at any one time that aren't deleted. Um, so anything that has been listened to, saved, or brand new. The default in the system is 50. And as you can see here on the left side, you can change that to anywhere between zero, which would give them no message capability, or 500. So they would be able to have up to 500 messages. So you do have that capability here. Um, I do recommend typically bumping that up because voicemails do not take up a lot of space and it will save you a lot of time on your overhead. Um, so it's definitely a good thing to bump up over the default of 50, um, but you can govern that however you need here. And then here, under outgoing message length, in Short Hill Communicator, um, you can actually send direct messages to people's voicemail um, using the voicemail tab. And this governs how long those messages can be. Um, and so that um, will default to 300 seconds as well. So just like the incoming message length. Um, and this can be changed to up to an hour as well. Um, you can set this again to whatever you want it to be. Voicemail callback um, allows you to use the voicemail system to actually place calls back to people. So if you dialed into the voicemail system and you listened to a message, um, there's actually an option in there that allows you to call the person directly back. Um, one thing to keep in mind on this is that this can be used um, by somebody to essentially leave you a message from a long distance number and then call in and use the voicemail callback function to call that number back. Um, this has happened in the past um, to um, to a few people um, a couple years ago when where a company from like Portugal was able to get in and um, call themselves back. Because of this, we highly recommend you keep this voicemail call back off um, because it eliminates any chance of that happening. Um, and then you can still use communicator to call those people back directly very easily or the history button on your phone as well. Um, so you still have good options to get back to them. Um, wanted to point that one out because it's very important. Your lifespan of your voicemail password, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can set this between 30 and 365 days if you do want to actually uh, enable it in the system. Um, by default, it is not enabled, meaning once you set your voicemail password, the voicemail password is there for an indefinite amount of time unless you um, manually change your password. With this setup, it will force the user to go in and change their voicemail password um, at the specified amount of days. Um, so when they try to log in on the 31st day, for example, if I, if I turn this on and set this to 30, on the 31st day, um, when they log in with their old password, they're going to get a message saying that their password was expired and they have to enter a new password. Um, so you do have that option there. Um, you also have the ability to warn which will go to the user's email on file. Um, so you can set a days in advance for the password expiration. So if I wanted to notify my users five days before the 30 day mark that their password is going to expire, if I set this up, then those users are gonna get voicemail, a, a voicemail notification in their email um, from the voicemail system saying that your password will expire in five days. And that way they have a heads up that they will need to change their password. 
Allowing access to the broad the broadcast distribution list. This is a system distribution list, um, and it can be used by administrators to send essentially blast messages out to everybody at the same time. Um, this will allow that allow the uh, users with this class of service to get those. Um, and it's the same with the all the system distribution lists that are in there. Um, the system distribution lists are a little bit more refined and are for subsets of users. The broadcast distribution list is everybody. Um, so when these are used, um, the, um, if this box isn't checked, people in this class of service won't actually get those. So this is nice if you have a certain set of users that maybe don't need any of those notifications um, and it would just be clutter in their inbox. Um, you can actually uncheck this so that they wouldn't receive those. Um, kind of hand in hand with that, with that is the allow message notification. Um, that's going to essentially just be the voicemail system letting you know um, when you get a voicemail. Um, and then you'll also see right under that allow message notification to external number. This one is actually pretty important to um, the escalation profiles that we'll be building later. This allows the system to call you um, when you are um, outside on your cell phone um, and let you know that you actually have a voicemail. Um, we actually use this um, in what am I trying to say? We are we are we use this um, in conjunction with the um, after-hour support system that we use, so that if we miss a call, let's say you call in at 7:05, and we miss a call every five minutes, the um, system will actually call our work group and um, let us know that we have a voicemail waiting for us, and it continues to call us until somebody picks up and listens to the voicemail. It's to make sure that people can get to it. So this is important for things like that. And we're gonna get into the um, escalation profiles here in just a minute. You also have the ability to stop people or allow people to download their voice messages as WAV files. Um, so if this is something that is allowed in your environment and they can um, describe a WAV file and that's okay, you can keep this on for easy use of your users. Um, if not, if you need to govern that so that people aren't allowed to download their voice messages, um, you can just turn this off and then they wouldn't be able to get an attachment with a WAV file um, with their voicemail notification forwarding that they can set up in Communicator. So this is an easy, easy way to get that set up. Voicemail prompt style, um, you'll never need to touch this. You'll want to keep this on the default short tail. And that's just the that's just the way that the system handles the voicemail tones. So you don't ever need to touch that. I just wanted to point that out. And then a spot here that is going to be pretty beneficial to a lot of you is the auto delete functionality. Um, if you have users that that typically don't like to um, delete their voicemails or um, you are running into space issues on the server, this can be very handy. Um, what this will do it, with the auto delete is you can specify um, a certain stopping point for um, even saved messages or unheard messages to be deleted. So if people just aren't checking their voicemail, and you can see that here, you can set it from anywhere to seven to 2000 days, meaning on the seventh day, if I set this for seven, anything that's saved or unheard is going to get purged from the system anyway. Um, for that user. Um, so that is one nice way to kind of free up space and also free up mailboxes so you aren't going in and manually deleting voicemails so people can get new voicemails. Um, you also have the same ability to um, delete heard messages and you can specify a different time frame for that. So maybe you want to allow your, your folks to keep saved messages for a whole month, but messages that were heard and are, are not saved are just automatically pruned after seven days. That's something that you can do in here um, so that you can free up that space and kind of automate that um, clutter reduction for your users. You also have the ability in here to actually notify the user that auto deletes are going to happen. Um, that way they can prepare. So that is, that is um, basically the gist of the class of service there um, and how you get that set up. Once you get your class of service set up, it's as simple as setting setting that class of service onto the user group that you need to put it in. So um, now that we've got this training class of service, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my user groups over here on the left side. And you'll notice we have a few here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just go into executives here. 
And like I was showing at the very beginning, we've got the three classes of service here. And you'll notice this one is set for fully featured um, for telephony, um, no restrictions for call permissions, and then it's using the large mailbox setting for class service voicemail. All I've got to do is click on this drop down, select my new class service, and then I would just hit save here. And now anybody in that user group is now following the new class of service that I have just set up. And those features take effect immediately, meaning if I have auto pruning set up, um, those set, that seven day timer starts right there for any messages. Um, if, they, if you have increased the amount of mailbox size that the users get, that immediately goes into effect. And the same with the maximum um, time for incoming and outgoing messages. Um, so all those things immediately take effect. So that is the class of service option. Um, wanted to take a second here to see if anybody um, has any questions right now. Um, and if not, we're going to go into um, escalation profiles, and I will show you that. It looks like we may not have any questions just yet. If anything comes up, don't don't be shy. Go ahead and throw it in the questions box, and we will be able to answer it. Um, even if something comes back to you from what we just went over, that's not a problem. So we're going to take the voicemail notification a step further here. Um, and this is the piece that I think is really going to be um, the most beneficial for people here. Um, let's say we need to set up a profile for a specific group. In our case, it's our support group, but it's anything that you guys might have that might be more of a 24 seven or an urgent operation um, in your business, um, where you need to make sure that your users, if they're not directly available, maybe it's after hours, but they still need to get to it, they need to be able to know and they need to be alerted that they have a voicemail waiting for them so that they can respond. Um, that's where an escalation profile can come into play. So what I'm going to do here, you'll see I'm in a work group right now, um, which is the main spot that you'll see this. You can also do this for individual user profiles. Um, you will have the same link. But what you'll see here is down on the line that has the Your Mailbox server, there's a link right next to it that says Escalation Profiles and Other Mailbox Options. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And it's going to bring me to this page. And this page has a bunch of specific voicemail notification settings that can be set up for um, this particular work group. So basically what happens when this work group gets a voicemail. And so there's a few things that we can, that we can do right off the top. And then there's also um, a whole list of profile options that we're gonna get into as well. Um, so to go through what you have here in, in this uh, settings menu here, is you have your email delivery options, and there's an email address field here, and you'll note it's blank. That's because this is going to be a separate voice voicemail notification from the whatever direct uh, email is on the user. Or in this case, because it's a work group, it doesn't already have an email associated with it. And so this email can be anything. It could be an individual user, or it could be a distribution list, um, which is very handy for group environments. Um, and so, for example, if we wanted to make sure our support got this. I would just type in our support at inflowcommunications.com email address in here. That's a distribution list that goes to our entire support team. And so if there was a um, voicemail that was left, if I have the deliver messages email um, function under it turned on, then that email address and all those people in that distribution list are gonna be the people that get this voicemail notification. Right under this, um, under the deliver messages email, you have three options. By default, it's disabled, which means nothing happens. Nothing gets sent directly to an email um, for a notification. You also have the ability to just email a text message saying that you did, you did receive a voicemail, and it will essentially say, you've received a voicemail um, from, and then show the caller ID um, and the total length of the message. So you'll see that there. And then the third option, and this does depend on the user group uh, or the class of service setup that we went over before, 
is you have the ability to attach a wave file. This does have that does mean that you have to have the ability to attach a wave file turned on for the class of service for the work group or for the user. But if you do, um, if this is turned on in addition to the text message that you'll get from the system saying that you have a voicemail, it's going to send you a wave file of the voicemail as well, so you can listen to it from anywhere. Um, the other piece to that is. Um, you can actually mark the message in communicator or in um, or yeah in communicator or on your phone as heard, meaning your your message notification lamp will not actually turn on, and also the um, the text in communicator will indicate that it is a heard message if you want to do that. Now this does mess with the, the uh, escalation profile options below. So if you plan on using an escalation profile, you want to make sure you keep this box unchecked because all of those all those escalation profiles work off the fact that the voicemail is on red. Um, so if this gets checked, the escalation profile just doesn't happen. Also, the system will send you in a message when your voicemail um, when your voicemail box is full. That is actually a default setting, um, but it does need to have an email address specified in order for that to be sent. So as long as you have the email address in there, um, if the mailbox ever does become full, the system will actually send you an email telling you you need to clear some space in your voicemail box. Under here is automatic message forwarding. Um, and this is a nice one for if you are going to either need a second set of eyes to be able to see voicemails, or if you need to forward voicemails for maybe a specific user when they are out of the office so that somebody can respond. Um, by default, um, of course, this is set to not automatically forward because it wouldn't know where to forward to. Um, you can also specify a specific mailbox, and this is going to be done by user. And it can be done by your um, extension. It can also be done by name, um, just like anything else in the short tail system. So, um, right now, for Nick's work group, if I set this up now, any any messages that were left would automatically forward also to um, the Nick Montrond user that is built in the system. Um, so that way, both the work group has a copy, so anybody in the work group would be able to see the message. And then also, um, Nick himself would receive a message in his personal inbox. Um, there's also the AMIS function. This is for integrations with other voicemail systems. Um, I've actually never seen this in use, um, and I don't suspect this is going to be something that you will see um, directly, but this is for integrations to other legacy systems. So you'll be doing almost all of your work with this mailbox option here. Um, under there is also a checkbox for delete message after forwarding. So if you just wanted to send a voicemail to one person, um, like we did there, and then you want to delete the message from the original mailbox, this will delete the message after it gets sent to the person that's specified in the automatic message forwarding. This is nice for things like setting up a secondary greeting for somebody who has multiple job functions. Where I see this a lot is um, in school districts where you have somebody that may handle the main line, but they also handle the attendance line. And so they need specific greetings for the two for the two voicemail boxes, but they both they both need to go to the same person. Um, one way to do that is to set up the attendance greeting on a work group and then automatically forward the message to the person that needs to hear them and then delete the message after forwarding. That gives you a, sec a separate greeting for the user and then also gives you everything you need for um, getting the message to them without creating additional space on your server. Any questions on any of that before I dive into the actual escalation profiles? Okay. So right under that, um, you you might have noticed when I got on this page, this giant list of profiles and this message notification escalation profiles area, and you've got a couple different notification options. Um, so what what you will um, typically see with this is you will do it for the first unheard message, which you will see on the right side there. You can also um, set the profile so that they immediately go off for every new message that hits the box, which is how we do it. Um, if we ever get a call that goes to voicemail after hours, that, that uh, notification um, and the escalation profiles immediately goes into effect to make sure that we're going to get that call very quickly and that we're going to be able to respond to you. Um, and then under here is a list of profiles 
um, that you can set up. Um, and you'll notice that there's a used by and there's a steps option. And I'm going to click into one of these and I'm going to show you what these are all about. So this is the escalation profile page here. Um, and you'll notice that um, there are up to 10 steps. And there's a whole bunch of different settings that you can set up for this. Um, specifically, if you want email notifications, if you want phone notifications, um, there's even a pager setting um, on this. And so there, there's a number of things that can be done here. Um, and then there's also a repeat count. So you can actually repeat these steps multiple times. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sample one here and go through what they do. Okay. So we'll just call this testing profile. And I'm going to set this to two for the repeat count. Um, and so for each one of these steps, every one of these options is the same. Um, the timeout that it specifies here from zero to 3,600 minutes um, is when that step goes off. So um, for example, if I set this to five, um, then what will happen is for each new message that comes in, um, if five minutes elapses before somebody listens to that voicemail, it's going to trigger this escalation step. Under that, you'll notice that there is a box for urgent only. So if there's a voicemail that's flagged as urgent, which you can do when you leave the message and also through communicator, you can mark a voicemail as urgent. Um, you, if you check this box, the escalation profile will only go off if the voicemail is checked urgent. Um, I typically recommend that you don't turn this on because in my experience, if something truly is urgent, somebody may forget to mark it as urgent because they're in a hurry. Um, so turning this on may actually be detrimental to what you're trying to do. So I would keep this off um, for any escalation profile that you set up. Under there is notification by email. And this looks very similar to um, the, the forwarding um, that is on the previous page. And it's the same deal. You can set it up to either not send an email notification. You can set it up to email text only. Um, and then you can also set it up so that it attaches the wave file. And again, this does require that the user group or the yeah the user group has the ability to attach a wave file for either the work group or the user in question. If they don't have the ability to actually send um, the wave file through, then this won't work. Um, so that is important to note. When I ch change one of these drop downs, so if I do text only, the email address will pop up here. Um, and you can enter a different email address from the first one as well. So um, in this case, it does work in conjunction with the previous page. So um, what, you will what you will see is when I leave a voicemail, um, you will get the initial notification to that support and inflow communications email address um, saying, hey, you've got a voicemail. Um, and if I, if I set up the wave file, I get the wave file there. After five minutes, this would send again and it can go to either the same email that I had in before, which I would just type in the email again, or if I needed to send this to um, somebody higher up to take a look at it, um, I could actually specify a specific email um, for this option. So this is nice because you can use this to send this to um, the group, send it to the group again. If they're not responding, you can send it to a manager's email um, or whatever you need to do in order to make sure that somebody gets on the horn and talks to the person. Um, so you do have those options. Under that, you also have notification by phone. And this is literally the voicemail system giving you a ring so that um, you know that you have a call or a uh, voicemail waiting for you. Um, and this is what we do every five minutes, is it literally calls a, um, a work group that has all of us in it. And until one of us picks up, it's going to keep calling us every five minutes to let us know. And so um, with this, you always want to use the phone option. Pager is not something that you, that you want to use with this. Um, I'm actually not sure why it's in there still. But for the phone option, you have two, you have two things you can do, set up. You can set up an external number. You can also set up an extension number. So if I type in Nick here, because I want it to go to Nick's work group, because that's going to have everybody in it. 
if I set it up like this, every five minutes, not only will I get an email um, with the text of the, of the message, um, just saying that we've got a missed call, um, and then um, it will actually call Nick's work group um, in an attempt to get somebody. And the work group itself can be set up for um, users that, that are externally assigned to cell phones and other numbers as well, which is how we do it. So you can hit multiple people. Um, if you want to just hit one person, you can type in their extension here, or if it's an external number, you can set it up here. So if I, if I wanted to just ring the support number, um, that's our, our our uh, Portland support number. I could put that in there as well. Um, and so the way that these work is for each one of these um, escalation profiles, you can set up to 10 steps and you can set a different timeout. So this is step one. If I wanted to do step two, I'll just go to step two and I would configure this again. So after maybe another three minutes, maybe I, I sent this to, send this to, management and then also maybe I call a different number maybe maybe a manager's cell phone or something like that to let him know hey your group's been notified um, they haven't picked up so we've reached step two of the escalation profile and now this is going to you um, so that you guys know that you have a missed voicemail um, that you can get on top of that's pretty much it for the escalation profile. Um, it looks like a lot. There's really not a ton of it to it, um, but that's the gist of how that works. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in in the uh, questions box here. It does look like we do have one question um, from Rich. Um, our voicemail sent to Outlook using an Exchange unified messaging system. Um, this the voicemail system is using built-in SMTP profiles on the server to send these out. Um, so it is actually going to send it directly from the server itself using SMTP. Um, any other questions? All right. And so... The last piece of this is actually going to be event filters. And this one is pretty cool. And we all, we do also um, recommend a few of these as well. Um, what event filters are is basically a set a set of settings um, that you can you can uh, specify in director so that if a specific event occurs in your system. So for example, off the top of my head, maybe a user calls 911, which generates an event in the event viewer on the, on the uh, server itself. Or maybe your PRI has a D channel failure, um, which is gonna stop you from making and receiving calls on that PRI. Um, you can set up event filters in the short call system so that it, the uh, system will alert you and let you know what's going on so you can respond to things proactively. Um, the event filters setting in director, which is gonna be under the maintenance tab here, so you'll see under maintenance, and then I clicked on event filters, is going to um, be where you set these up. And when you come into here, you'll note that there's a few settings that you can change. You can actually note the specific server. So if you want it, if you want all the notifications from HQ, or if you want all the short tail servers in your environment, you can set that up. You can also change the source. Um, by default, it's gonna be any shoreware source, which is what you want. That's that's what the event filter is going to show here. Um, and so if you have it set to shoreware, um, you can even um, set it to specific services in the system. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, but because you can actually specify the event ID down here and you're gonna wanna do it for specific events for sure. Um, because there are a there are a ton of events in the short call system. A lot of them are just informational, so you want to make sure you're getting the ones that are important to you. Um, you can also set it to specific services in the system, so you can actually look for any specific service on the um, server itself. So if you're if you're really worried about um, certain things breaking, um, maybe you had an issue 
um, on your server um, a while back that you're worried about coming back, you can actually look for specific services there as well. Um, but um, for this training, we, we will keep this to shortware. Um, you can set the event ID as well. And this is really the big piece here. Um, the event ID is going to be what corresponds with the event viewer, which is built into Windows. And whenever an alert gets generated from that event ID, that's when the um, system would use the event filter to send a notification out to your group. This may take a second to load, um, so I'm going to just minimize that for now. But as an example, I'm going to type in event 1319 here. And the reason for that is I know that that event is what, what gets spawned in the Shortel event viewer and in the Windows event viewer when a user calls 911. Um, so 1319 is a big one for us, especially with a lot of the work that we do for um, for safety features in the system. That's one of the most critical things that we can have set up. Um, and so with that, with this in here, um, this so far, this event filter is set up to go ahead and notify anybody um, that you specify in the email address whenever a 1319 alert happens. So if I call 911, then whatever my target email address here um, is, is going to get an email saying, um, that this event occurred and it will actually have the event in there, which is going to say user Tom Lyons called 911 um, from my phone and I'll have like a, a timestamp and everything. So you can see all of that. And so for this one, I'll just put in, put in my email there. Um, other ones off the top of my head, let's see if I can pull some shortware ones up here. Just to give you an example of the kind of stuff you can look at. There we go. And so you can see certain things in here, like, um, for example, um, it looks like somebody somebody tried to log in on successfully earlier, um, and this is actually a log me in a log me in uh, source. But other ones, like for this one, event ten nineteen, a voicemail. A voice message sent to a voicemail server has been returned. That typically just means that there's something set up with the something set up with SMTP that is wrong. Um, this is a demo system, so that doesn't surprise me here. But if I wanted to look for event 1019, which you see here, all I've got to do is in director um, create an event filter for event 1019, and whenever that occurs and the system flags it and sends an the event out in the event viewer, the email address that's specified in the target is going to get an email saying, hey, this occurred. Um, so that way you are able to keep ahead of things here. Now there are four that we specifically um, request, or not request, but we um, recommend to get set up. There's four of them in particular. And the four options here are 1319, which is the 911 event notification, 1342, which is going to be the notification that the system sends out when your PRI's D channel goes down. So if you have an issue where the PRI stops talking, um, this will let you know. So that way, instead of getting 50 emails and yelling users saying that they can't they can't get calls and all their calls just got cut off, you're going to get an email and you're going to know exactly what's going on there. Um, there's also two related specifically to the short tail switches. And what we look for is 166, which tells you if a fan in one of the short gear units has stopped working, um, at which point it's no need to panic, but just to have it on your radar so that we can get you an RMA. Um, and then also 167, which is very similar, but that's a fan running slow. Um, so what this means is that um, if the fan starts running slow and the switch, the switch realizes it, it reports it to the server. The server will send the alert out and then you will get a email letting you know that the fan is starting to run slow and it's, start, it's time to um, get a claim process with us to get that switch replaced, um, which we can typically do very quickly. Um, there are all sorts of other alerts that um, can be set up for this. Um, so if you have any specific questions on this, I would, I would shoot us an email. Um, 
if you're looking for anything that you really want to dive into on that and we can help you get it set up. Those four are definitely big ones there for you. All right, and with that, um, we do have about 17 minutes left. Um, and we have come to the end of the um, training here. It looks like we do have a few questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and read those out here. Um, and then at the end, um, if you have any more questions, go ahead and let us know and we will go through them here. All right, so it looks like um, the first question is, what addition steps um, would be needed to set up Office 365 SMTP? Um, Essentially, what the, what they're going to look for here is you need you need credentials for the server um, to act for the relay to get set up. Um, there's also some IIS settings that are um, that are needed for this. It is different for every system depending on how you're using out uh, Office 365 and what your setup is. So if you have any specific questions on that, it's definitely best to um, get to get in touch with us and our support team so we can make sure that we can help you. Um, but that is something that we can definitely do. The next question here is, I assume that multiple email users can be entered for 911 alerts. Um, so you can do that. Um, the, the event filter list here only will take one email address at a time. However, if you set up multiple event filters, you can definitely set up multiple filters for the same, the, uh, same alert and send to multiple emails. You can also set up a distribution list that will give you what you need as well. Um, so yes, you definitely can do that. Can we set an event filter for LSP com list? Um, so LSP com list is a VxWorks um, command that allows you to list on a switch um, which set which switches and servers they are talking to. Are you talking about TMS disconnectivity? So switches stopping talking to each other? Okay. So yes, there is a TMS setting. In fact, there are a myriad of um, TMS related um, events that you can you can filter for. Off the top of my head, I wanna say the one for TMS loss is 233. Um, I don't think we have any in ours here, but let's look. Oh, we do. There we are. So you see event 233 here. TMS is disconnected from the switch V phone. This was done during some maintenance. Um, and so this can be used to, um, to send the alert out as well. So if you send an event filter here for event 233, then whenever that occurs, you will be able to um, get an get in a, uh, email saying, hey, this switch has disconnected from TMS and isn't talking anymore. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is if you have a switch that's going up and down a lot, you're gonna get a lot of emails. So that's just one thing to keep in mind there. Any other questions? All right, well, it looks like we are in good shape. Um, I'd like to take this time to thank you guys for coming out to the training today. Um, and we just keep an eye out. We will have some more trainings on the horizon. We're actually discussing our training topics um, for the next webinar um, here internally as well. If you have any any um, topics that you'd like to see covered, um, go ahead and shoot us an email um, so we can get those in and and uh, take a look at them and get something set up for you. Um, in the meantime, if you have any additional questions as well, go ahead and shoot those over. And as always, if you have any, any questions um, that you need to talk to us about, we are more than happy to help you out. Um, just, just give us a ring and we will be able to do that for you. So um, thank you guys very much. Um, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful weekend.